Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial where I'll be looking at editing this image using just some selection areas and the levels adjustment. Now this is a conversion of a Photoshop tutorial which I had on one of my magazine cover CDs and the chap that did that tutorial said that this sort of idea can be used on not just landscapes but it can be used on just about anything really wildlife images architecture and portraits um, it's up to you how you want to use it in that tutorial he used an image fairly similar to this one which had the grass at the bottom a lone tree and in his image it had mountains in the background and some sky this was the closest I could find on Unsplash and the original is done by Sean D Brown um, I will uh, add a link to this particular picture but you know, you're free to use whichever image you want to use and the end result that I was getting was this one here which I hope you think is better than this one which is like fairly um, not very much contrast in there and it's fairly light now you could quite easily just add a levels adjustment which you can get by clicking on this half black and white circle down here and selecting levels and then sort of doing a general sort of affecting the whole image at the same time adjustment so that is better than it was but I still feel that this result is better still so let me just shut down this one and I will delete this levels adjustment so we're back to our start image so the first thing I want to do is we need to make a selection now the selection tool I'm going to use is the freehand selection tool um, by default you'll probably have the marquee tool here if you click on this little arrow in the corner you can come down and get the freehand selection tool and we want it to be set on freehand and you can either have new or add doesn't really matter at this point but mine is set on new I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and we need to start outside the image so I'm going to click the left mouse button and keep the left mouse button held down the whole time while I do this so I'll click there and then just roughly draw up the outside of the image to where the grass meets the sky and then it, this doesn't have to be perfect but just do the best that you can at getting the horizon I'm going to come under the tree back over there and and then all the way around the outside again back to the start point and when I get to the start point and release the mouse button a selection of that area will be made now the only problem here is that that selection there that line on the horizon is going to be very sort of sharp you would notice the difference between if I added the adjustment now you would tell where the adjustment was so we, we need to refine this and up here there is a refine button you click on that and it will open the refine selection panel and the background will go all red where the area isn't selected so only this bottom area selected so what we're going to do is we're going to feather this selection and you really need to ramp this up quite high in fact I'm going to go right up to a hundred pixels so there is a sort of a much more gentle transition between the selection and the non-selected area I am also just going to brush some of these areas here like the, the bushes that were sticking up just to make sure that they are selected in that area like so like that so then making sure that the output is set to selection just click 
apply. So we now have a new selection area. It's very hard to tell visually that that is feathered, but we know that area is feathered. So now I'm going to add a levels adjustment, and because that area is selected, only that area will be affected by the levels adjustment. So if I click on this half black and white circle, come up to levels. As you can see, the levels adjustment has been added to the layer panel here. And I can now make some adjustments to the grass area. In fact, I can now press Control and D to get rid of that selection area. I don't need it to be selected anymore. And I'm just going to do this by eye. You can set it however you want it. So I'm going to go there. I'm not going to affect the whites, I don't think, because it will just, I think, defeat the object a bit. So let's go with that. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that, I think for now. So I will shut that down and what I will do though is I will rename this layer and I will rename this grass. Now as I'm going to have quite a few levels adjustments it, you know, it might be difficult to know which one is which which is why I'm renaming them um, which is a good habit to get into. Because um, you know, if I want to come back later and tinker with them it's easier to find which one you want to to do um, the adjustment tinkering on if they have been renamed. So the next thing I want to do is the tree. Now the tree at the moment doesn't look too bad and I'd be almost quite happy to leave it as it is. But when I come to adjust the sky it will affect this. So I'm going to select it now so that I can come back later and adjust it as I want it. So I'm going to zoom in for this and that should do. This time rather than the freehand selection tool I'm going to go for the selection brush tool. Click on that. Again it's on add and you want a brush size that will fit the particular area that you are going for so I'm just going to Make sure I get that person under the tree. And I'm going to just go up the trunk area. And then I'm just going to do, try and grab some of the bigger clumps of leaves. I'm not going to try and get all the outlined thinner areas. Just going to be fairly random. I th think I've got mm, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that for now. And then I'm going to click on the refine tool. And as you can see there's lots of areas I haven't got. But this is where the refine brush will come in handy. So I'm just going to paint over those areas that I didn't get in the first run through. You don't have to be too brilliant at getting this selection, but it's not like we are going to be changing the sky. The sky is still going to be as as it was. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't giving it enough time to finish one selection before I started making the next one. This is probably the most time consuming bit of this tutorial. So and I'm going too fast again. So you don't necessarily want to do too large an area. Is it I'll give your computer a bit of time to actually do the job you're asking it to do. 
I think I'm almost there. I think I'm roughly back to where I started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the brush very big and just do a general capture of the whole area. Which obviously takes quite a while for the computer to catch up. So again, we've got the output on selection click apply and as you can see we've pretty much got a lot of the tree not all, necessarily all of it but we've got enough so again I'm going to add a levels adjustment to that I'm not going to make any adjustments at the moment this is only in case I need to later on so I'll shut that down I'll press Control and D to get rid of the selection area and, and then I will rename this layer tree. So as you can see, the each levels adjustment has its own mask, and that mask is using the selection that we made to just make it sure that that is the only area that is affected. And so the next bit we want. Let me zoom back out again. So the next bit that we want is the sky. Now I don't. You could use a freehand selection tool again, draw all the way outside and back along the horizon. But I'm going to cheat slightly. I'm going to highlight the grass layer. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click on the icon for the grass layer. And that selection area will return. So all I need to do now is invert the selection so it's, in, it's selecting the sky and not the grass. So you come up to the select menu and down to invert pixel selection or you can use control shift and I so that now it's the sky area that is being affected uh, selected I should say so again I'm going to add a levels adjustment you've got the new levels adjustment here with the mask just uh, affecting the sky so while I wait for that to put a histogram in there, let me just shut that down a second. I'm going to rename this sky. And I'm going to get rid of the selection area with Control and D. Now, double click on that to open it up. I still don't have a histogram yet, but it should turn up soon. So I'm just going to darken the sky area. And as you can see, I'm now affecting the tree. But I mean, not necessarily adversely, but you you may want to, well, I will alter it a bit later. So I've now altered the master layer, but I'm also going to just alter the blue channel and just darken this down a little bit more. I'll make that a bit bluer by coming to the left, darken it down just a tad. Let me just have a quick look on this side. Yes, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. So I will shut that down and I will come back to the tree layer and I'll double click on this to open up the levels adjustment. And let me just have a quick look. I'll lighten that tree up a bit yeah I'm happy with that I'll just raise the white levels a bit now in the um, Photoshop tutorial on his particular image he was having a bit of trouble with the horizon line where the two selections joined and what he did was again using the free selection tool he just got a bit of the grass and a bit of the sky along the horizon line and then added a new levels adjustment and sort of matched them a bit better 
Now I personally, I'll get rid of that selection area. I personally think my horizon on this particular image is no major problems, it looks okay. So I will leave that as it is. So the next thing that the chap did in the Photoshop tutorial was to add in some leading lines to help draw your eye towards the tree in the middle here. So again, using the freehand selection tool and this time I'm going to put it on add so I'm going to use do more than one selection area here and I'm going to just zoom out a little bit so I'm going to again start from the outside hold down the mouse key and draw towards the tree uh, there's one selection area there, and then do another one sort of like there, and one from the outside on this side. So I have these three selection areas. Let me zoom back in. And again, we're going to refine this and we're going to feather this again quite high above 80 percent let's go to 83 that'll do again we've got it set on selection so click apply and then all you need now is to add another levels adjustment i can press ctrl and d to get rid of those selection areas and i can just darken we go to the gamut there and then bring the black slider back a bit just darken that grass there and there just to sort of make some leading lines to help draw your eye towards the tree area um, maybe not so much See each image and will need a different sort of setting, so let me just close that down. So there I have like the four different levels adjustments and I think I want to just tinker with the grass area a little bit, so I'll double click on that and let's try the I think it's the blue. If I just make that just slight a slight adjustment there on the blue channel. So if I then select all those layers that I've got there, that was a start and that is how I've finished so basically it's just a case now of saving or exporting this with a new name so you don't overwrite your original and that is pretty much it I have also done a written version of this tutorial and I will add a link to that in the description for this video uh, as well as the link to Sean D Brown's image on Unsplash. So thank you for watching and goodbye.